what happened in the market today, which Bitcoin miners held up strong today, and what are we expecting tomorrow. We'll talk about this and more on the afternoon video of Trade Cave today. So let's start with Bitcoin. Here you can see on Bitcoin, we got our we are printing our first red candle since February 5th. So we're on the 13th now. So we're going on close to well, we had eight days of just green candles and we are printing currently our first red candle of the day here. I don't know if it actually will stay red or not, but that's what we're doing. We did come back to the five day SMA here at uh, 48 275, just like I said on an earlier video, it was either this morning or yesterday, can't remember which, but I said we we're going to come back down to this five day and we did, just like expected. Uh, and with the Bitcoin miners, we didn't do a whole lot today. It actually was not down, not much down or up, but at least with uh, CleanSpark. CleanSpark's a bit of a champ here. We opened up all the way down here at like minus 12% at 13.75, 13.75. We ran up as high as 16.35, almost to the highest highs of this swing here for giving a little bit of that back. We're trying to get into this downward channel, but like the bulls just do not want to give up on it. So that's really encouraging to see. Uh, Clean Spark was one of the, the toughest of the day in terms of holding price compared to its peers and what caused that. I mentioned that in this morning's video. CPI came in hot. These are on risk assets. If, if, if inflation data is coming in hot, they are going to go down because you don't fight the Fed and the Fed fights inflation and they fight inflation by sucking money out of the economy. So that's what happened this morning. We, we, we got increasing inflation and for the remainder of 2024, inflation data is probably going to move the market in major major ways uh, that so inflation data as well as employment data and home building data those those three are going to move the markets huge uh this year as we saw today with the cpi i i think at the end of the week here uh jobless claims are on thursday so if we see unemployment go up that's a good thing for us because that means the fed has less work to do uh, and stocks can go up if they come in with high employment, uh, like more jobs than expected, then we will see a bad day uh, on those days when that is reported. And then we also have Friday housing starts, how many houses are being built. That's the housing market. That is a very important aspect of the economy as well and determines whether or not things are healthy and looking up or not. So we want to see more housing starts than, uh, than less housing starts to get better data there. And then with the inflation, of course, we want it to be lower, not higher like it was today. It was higher. And that was a major, major problem and caused us to sell off very dramatically in the pre-market. Like if I open up the pre-market here, yeah, we were down as low as, yeah, 13.77 in the pre-market here. And then we just rallied up right off of that. We, we came almost to my line here at 13.55, which I said we'd get to, and we almost did, and then took off from there. So that's, that's what's going on today. Uh, also, with that inflation data coming in hot, I mentioned this morning, and I'm going to show it again, TMF, the 20-year Treasury bill, that suffered greatly from that bad inflation data, because if we don't get a cut, this doesn't go up. So we need a rate cut for this to go up. And this has dropped dramatically since I first mentioned it, uh, not first message, message, uh, mentioned it, but since I mentioned it recently, we're actually down, I think, about 17% because I mentioned it at this high because that was a pretty exciting day. but then. Since then, it's 17% down. So, I mean, if it was interesting to you at 62, it better be very interesting to you at 5165. It's very interesting to me. I'm fully positioned on it, though, so I'm just holding for now uh, when it comes to TMF. But if it goes much lower, I might be interested in getting a little bit more. Uh, what's on deck tomorrow for the news? We've got to be aware of this. We've got two, two feds, Goolsby and Barr. And if we go to the Hawk Dove cheat sheet on. Um, ITC markets here, you can see that Goolsby is the most dovish Fed around and Barr is not far off from them in terms of being very dovish. Dovish is good for us as on-risk asset holders. Um, so if they say anything to spook the market, to scare the market um, to, by not sounding dovish as is expected, we're going to have another really bad day tomorrow. So these two Speakers, Gouldsby and Barr are going to have a big impact tomorrow because they're ex they're doves. So they're expected to be dovish. And if they come in hawkish saying 
higher for longer, uh, like, you know, parroting Jerome Powell's words, then we're going to have a real bad time tomorrow while they are speaking, possibly after they're speaking. Uh, so one speaks right at market open. So that's that's Goolsby. So if we see a really bad candle right at market open, that means that Goolsby said something hawkish and, and no one is expecting that because he is uh, a, or they are a dove. And then at market close, we've got Michael Barr. And if they say something hawkish, well, then we'll see some aftermarket downturns from that. Um, and if they say something as expected, honestly, if they come in as expected, which is just kind of dovish as they are uh, as feds, then probably won't we probably won't see much unless they're really saying like we're gonna do get a rate cut this year like if they like say we're gonna do it then yeah we'll see a big increase but if it's just kind of wishy-washy or hawkish then we're gonna see we're, we're gonna have another bad day so let's have a look see how some of clean sparks peers were doing let's see mara mara kind of climbed up a little bit they didn't do great let me take a look here yeah they just kind of stayed flat they came down stayed flat they didn't really recover too much there bit forms bit forms is actually two percent down on the day so it's kind of coming down in this channel here now actually let's do it about like this and about like so so we're in that channel now heading towards this box down here around the 238 ish range bit digital they also were down seven percent so they had a rough rough time but but Bit digital is above this green line, which is the marker for the double bottom here. The long time coming, this double bottom, but it is still holding above that even after this big drop. So that's very exciting and very telling in terms of expectations of this chart still being bullish. Now we did come off of a double top right here, came down. Uh, these are one hour charts. So right now I'm seeing what looks like a bit of a head and shoulder here. So I've got shoulder head and shoulder which means we could easily lose this um this this double bottom pattern here and have price come back down into the box down here at 279 ish down to 260 that's that's potential that could happen that is within the cards here right now on bit digital let's have a look see i think cypher had a really rough time today too down 10.26 percent but their, their chart looks exactly, it's like almost identical to Bit Digital. So I'm not going to go on and talk about that. Same expectations there. Same with HUT, except HUT isn't above their midpoint for their double bottom. So this head and shoulders concerns me a lot more than it does on the other two. It makes me feel like that's probably more going to be confirmed down, possibly all the way down to 744 on HUT. Let me go back to Clean Spark now, right now. Uh, let's see. Clean Spark, I mean, this could. We go to like a two hour or something this could be a bull flag here it could be i don't know if it is i don't think it is i feel like uh momentum is starting to slow down you can see it coming down here um we're not quite getting a top reading on the vix fix here either so i mean we're getting a bit of a top reading but not a huge one and we've been getting it for a while so it can keep going up uh i'm not honestly this is indecisive to me very indecisive the the the, the candles i'm seeing here right they're not really screaming um bullish or bearish it's just kind of looking like it wants to stay up in this area for now and we're just waiting to see what the next move is going to be and how explosive that move will be especially like just kind of long body doji hanging out up here where price is, it seems to be enjoying itself right now so that's all i've got today that's the update we had cpi ruined our day today We've got two dovish feds on deck, one in the morning, right at market open, the other at after market after, you know, closing bell. Um, if they speak as expected, we should see a pretty boring, flat, regular day. If they surprise us with anything, well, things will get a little crazy there. Uh, and that's really all we've got going on. The next big piece of data, Thursday, we've got initial jobless claims, which isn't super important, but it will be because we want higher jobless claims that's higher unemployment which sucks and is kind of terrible but we we want that to convince the fed that they've done their job and then friday we've got housing starts which we want to be high indicating that there's going to be housing supply coming in so 
that's what we're looking at. Uh, we also have core PPI. That's going to move the market too because PPI is the producer price index. If that comes in high, we'll have another significantly red day on Friday. And if that comes in low, that means that we're expecting you know, next month's CPI report to be better off. And then we'll see uh, a nice green day on that day. So Friday could really, really hurt us uh, or really, really boost us on Friday. That's actually going to be a very interesting day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a profitable day.